By the end of this lecture, you're going to learn how to make a custom directive configurable. Now, in the last lecture, we finished off our CC card hover directive, but it's not very reusable. We now want to be able to configure it so that it can be used in other situations. One such configuration parameter is the query selector for the element we want to hide or show. Currently, it's hard coded to be a class of card text. So if you remember here, we get the element we want to hide by looking specifically for a class called card text. Now, if we want to use our card hover directive on another element, we want to hide something that using some other query selector. We can't use the card hover directive because currently we're hard coding card text. So we want to make this part configurable. So the first thing to do is to move the query selector to a property of our directive. But to future proof ourselves, I'm going to set it, set it to a property of an object. So I've created a property called config, which has one property called query selector, and that's using our old class name. Now the reason I'm using an object is that if we wanted to add further configuration parameters in the future, we can just add them as properties to our configuration object. So next up, let's use this config object instead of our hard coded selector. So here, we use this.config.query selector. And then let's use it in both functions. And then finally, let's make our config property an input binding on the directive. Now to configure our directive, we can add an input property binding on the same element the directive is attached to. So on this div element here, where we added our CC card hover directive, I'm going to bind to the input property name configuration. So I'm going to type config and then I'm going to wrap it in square brackets. And I'm going to provide it another configuration object. So I want to use a query selector of the P tag. Actually, I made a little bit of a mistake. So on line 49, there should be an equals here. And now let's run the application again. And it's working just like before. So it's still showing and hiding the punchline, but it's doing it by showing and hiding the P tag versus uh, matching it on the class name. But what if we wanted to use our directive like this instead? So instead of having a separate config input, we want to input directly into our directive name itself. Just like how we've seen other built-in directives work. This is pretty simple to do. We just need to add an alias to the input decorator, which matches this decorator's selector. So we take the name of the selector and we pass that as the property as the alias for the input decorator. And now when we run the application, it's still working. So now we can use and configure our directive in one statement. In summary, we can configure our directives with standard input property bindings. And to make the syntax look similar to the built-in directives, we can use an alias for the input decorator to match the directives selector.